I recently saw an amazing post, I think it was on, um, it might have been on, what was it on? I'm going to say it was on the BBC. David Hockney recently actually announced, is it David Hockney? It must be him, right? David Hockney recently announced or recently shared some images of a... Da, 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 da. Shereen showed some work that he did recently uh, via visit in Normandy. Um, some landscape drawings, some landscape paintings, sorry, that I thought were really beautiful, that kind of got me inspired. And I thought, you know what, during this whole um, pandemic when we locked down, I'm going to get my paint brushes back out again. I'm going to start just painting what's outside my window, um, just kind of visualizing things and trying to um, get my mind to kind of get into that creative mood again. This is the article that kind of talks about it. I'll just quickly go through it now. It's a David Hockney shares exclusive art from Normandy as a respite for the news, which is really good. Um, it says here, David Hockney is in a lockdown at his house in Normandy with his dog, Ruby, and two of his standing assistants, um, JP and Jonathan, which is pretty cool, isn't it, right? That you have this ability to be like, you know, stranded somewhere in the middle of Normandy. I think a lot of people did this anyway on purpose, right? Some people purposely went away from where they actually live to a little cottage somewhere that they have outside of the main city to go and kind of relax so you're not stuck in a so you're not stuck you know in a metropolitan city having to scr- having to fight for resources which is a great idea i think especially if you've got a young family it probably isn't advisable to stay here you probably your kids will probably go stir crazy not being able to run outside and have some fresh air i understand that but obviously there is that risk that you're running that you're actually taking or transporting the virus from one place where everyone's highly infected but densely populated and you're closer to medical supplies and you're taken to another place where people are sparsely populated and there's not many medical supplies so it's a bit of a double-edged sword but i understand it you know if you've got a family it is what it is and if you're david hockney's age you know and he's still you know he's still painting he's still thriving the last thing he can risk is being in his studio somewhere in london and then catching the coronavirus not being able to recover because he's at that weird age in it where it seems to be a bit of a death sentence but this is a really cool article that explains it said um he's in his garden most days drawing with uh drawing the spring awakenings on his ipad in a bbc exclusive he's sharing 10 of his most recent images including one animation nine of which were never been published before for us to all enjoy a difficult time which is super nice if you're meant to do that i'm sure some people are going to take those paintings and probably get them printed um out or hung up in their walls or he'll probably end up selling himself the artist previously visited normandy in the autumn of 2018 for an installation of his stained glass window in the westminster abbey he thought it would be a good place to draw and paint the arrival of spring something he'd um done around a decade early in east yorkshire these pictures paintings and films were the basis of a successful exhibition in 2012 at the royal academy in london he was attracted to normandy because it offered a broader range of blossoms with apple cherry pear and plum trees as well as hawthorn and black fawn he had painted before we found this house with a large garden that was cheaper than anything in sussex and they bought it, renovated it, and bought a small studio, and have been there ever since in early March. He says, "I began the, I began drawing the winter trees on my new iPad." He said. Then the virus started. I went on drawing the winter trees that eventually burst into blossom. This is the stage where we are right now. Meanwhile, the virus is going mad, and many people said my drawings were a great respite for what was going on. He sent some of his work in progress to friends, which led him to releasing one image of daffodils for publication, which titled "Do you remember they can't cancel the spring." That's awesome. I love that title. He is now sharing his nine more, all painted in the last few days. Why are my iPad drawings seen as a respite for the news, he says? Well, they are obviously made by hand, depicting the renewal that is spring. It's a part of the world. In this part of the world, so he says. Um, the point being that his images are the product of him looking directly at nature and, disp- and, and depicting or representing what he sees by transmitting um, his sensory reaction through his fingers onto papers via a pencil rather than mediate the mediating the process for a photograph uh it continues here it says his pictures are a record of how he quick uniquely is expressing reality of his subject and the space in which exists the one-eyed mechanical camera flattens out all the individual nuances you know this is probably art speak for the sake of it but the drawings and the paint themselves are really really beautiful really unique obviously in their style the quintessential david hockney style things are kind of they're sort of in they're sort of in perspective but not really you have the nice elongated strokes like no jittery lines nice use of color just amazing um he says here i intend to carry on with my work which is now i see as very important uh he says we have two we have lost touch with nature rather foolishly as we are part of it not outside it this will in time be over and then what what have we learned i am 83 years old i will die the cause of death is birth the only real things in life are food love and in that order just like our little dog ruby 
I really believe this and the source of art is love. I love life, which definitely I love. A great message from him. Beautiful images from David Hockney. Again, I'll link in the show notes for you guys to check out yourself. But it is it makes you think, innit, if there is gonna be a change in attitude towards nature when all this stuff settles down and everyone gets back to normal. Will people just go back to will people just go back to how it was before and not give a shit or will there be like a little bit of a because what you'd want right is you'd want in general i think i think um let me yeah let's say this for once i think people is it probably it's probably a fair assumption to say that people in new york i say the middle eastern population or people who are who look like they practice islam or right or practicing muslim sorry i bet they have a much better time in new york post 9 11 than they did before right there's there's some sort of like residual of after effects of like being chastised in the street being called a terrorist and suddenly people start to be, you know, develop a bit of compassion they start to understand about the different regions in Saudi Arabia they start to realize oh not everybody in Saudi Arabia or not everybody in the Middle East is actually Muslim they have different sort of sex different sort of religious um religious leanings and then it gets people to understand the people that live around them and then it changes the conversation a little bit so your hope is that even if there is a bit of grace period, even if there is a little bit of a honeymoon period where everyone's outside and hugging each other and letting an old lady go in front of you in the queue to keeping the social distancing, you're hoping that even though some of the, that stuff might erode over time, people might just start getting snarky and annoyed on the central line as they were previously. You're going to hope the residual effects will kind of um, will be felt for like years to come and people will be a little bit more aware of their surroundings and won't take things for granted and one thing i think is going to happen quite often i've been looking at it myself is that i think there's going to be a lot of migrating of especially people that are my age or say people in my generation let's say from the generation of like for the time that you can probably leave home and you've got the means to let's say from the age of like 25 to 45 i think there's going to be a big migration of people leaving places like london and going to like smaller cities or smaller towns outside of london or in like you know in the middle of the uk um places in scotland republic of ireland northern ireland i think there's going to be a big change i can definitely see it happening because what we've seen with this whole pandemic is that most people don't need to work in a physical office i think there could be an argument to be had for some people lobbying their employers to re- allow them to work permanently via like a work from home request where they maybe have to come in once a week or once every week once like two two weeks out of the month and then you kind of review it as you go along so there might be a complete cultural shift in terms of how people approach work which also then approach how they approach life in it because you know work and life are sort of like synony- synonymous of each other they go hand in hand so that might be a good way to go about things and if you're going to move out to the countryside you're going to move out to nature you're going to have to go out there and experience it and it's going to change the way you kind of interact with your surroundings how you buy how you shop um the things you take for granted the things you don't take for granted it'll change everything i think because even now like who's buying fashion who's buying clothes who's going out there and spending money on frivolous things or wasting money on that or like you know it's it's all it's kind of flipped it around it's kind of made it a really more interesting kind of way to go about things and again maybe we might adopt the kind of mediterranean thing right where people enjoy a lot more spending time at home with their friends having a drink and getting smashed right then they do going out and spending money at a bar right it's the idea that it's the actual people that you're with is that's important it's not where you go so the idea of going to a cocktail bar and wasting a lot of money you know to sit by a candlelit table somewhere um in a musty pub listening to really trendy songs isn't that important you want to be surrounded by your mates so that might change the way people deal with it you never know man but regardless of that um this is a welcome respite from david hockham i really recommend you check it out and I thought it would be a good way to start the podcast instead of, you know, going into doom and gloom straight away. But some really amazing, beautifully done paintings from the legend that is David Hockney. Um, really well done, really nicely done. And then again, um, yeah, I recommend you check it out as one of the animated videos to see how, what that looks like. What happens here? It's animated. What happens is it just fill up? Oh, cool. The sky is moving in the background. That's really, really cool, man. I really recommend you check it out. I think it's awesome. I think I'm plugging my headphones because I'm not plugging We'll see what else happens. But yeah, good stuff all around.